good morning all my dear students as you people know that we are doing the lesson with the mahajanapadas where i already taught, taught you about janapadas mahajanapadas the social condition the political conditions so today we are going to start few new topics from the same lesson so let's start as you can see it's a map Indian map which shows the territories of Mahajanapadas. Mahajanapadas. So Mahajanapadas means large territorial states. Several Mahajanapadas flourished in the northern and northwestern part of India. The king gained importance and they became hereditary rulers. Various rituals and sacrifices like Ashwamegha, Rajasuya and Vajapeya were performed to impress the people with increased power and prestigious of the king. So this much already we have done in the last class. Now about urbanization. So the use of iron, paddy, transplantation and the imposition of taxes, the growth of trade and urban settlement, the growth of new skills and crafts and the emergence of new religion and ideas were the main features of the Mahajanapadas. The rulers of the Mahajanapadas maintained big standing armies to protect their kingdom from attacks and to launch, and to launch attacks on other kingdoms. The soldiers were given regular salaries in the form of punch marked coins or karshapana. With the introduction of coins, the rulers began to collect taxes in cash or in kind for the maintenance of the army, to administer the kingdom, to build forts and to create public welfare facilities such as roads, wells and canals. The farmers paid one-sixth of their total produce, the craftsmen paid the king in kind, the taxes were deposited with an officer with an officer called Sangrita. So in urbanization of Mahajanapadas it is given the most important is the iron. With the help of iron large territories are captured by the kings or by the rulers. And with this Janapadas become Mahajanapadas which large with large capturing of territories. And this way they started collecting tax as well and they started paying to the soldiers and with the introduction of coins the rulers began to collect taxes in cash or in kind for the maintenance of army too and to administer the kingdom to build forts and to other and to create other public welfare facilities such as roads wells and canals and the farmers paid one sixth of their total the farmers had to pay one sixth of their total produce and the craftsmen paid the king in kind. The taxes were deposited with an officer called Sangrita. So with this I am ending this class here. In the next class we will discuss about monarchies and republics and many other topics from the lesson. Till then thank you.